Hi, this week we are going to create some drum fills using Ableton Live. The process I'm about to show is a controlled random approach. Um, for those familiar to this channel know that I'd like to use uh, a controlled random wherever possible. And what I mean by that is that the sequence is generated randomly, but once done it is fixed. Uh, I prefer to work this way rather than having to record out and then cherry pick the best bits. Um, I find that it it works, but it it's an unnecessary waste of time in my opinion. <clears throat> so by that I mean, let's just have a listen. Um, essentially it's driven by this Randunka uh, device. I'll put the link in the description. This is my free device. You can go and pick up. It randomizes the velocity, the length, and also the steps. In this case, we are just using the um, the velocity. So as you can see, it's triggering velocity on these at these levels, and then that is generating the hit in the, in the drum loop. So let's have a listen first, and then I'll go through and I'll explain how that works. So the last half a bar in this section is the drum fill. If I press randomize here, that will change the pattern. So it's a case of pressing randomize repeatedly until you find a pattern that works for the track. So let's have a listen. What I might do actually is just solo this, focus on just the last half a bar. So there are many there that you could use depending on the on, on the track. But as you can see once you've done once you've selected randomized, then it stays that way fixed. So you can leave it in the track permanently without having to commit to audio. So how this works is the Randunka device generates a random velocity, like I said, which goes into the expression control device in the velocity channel here, and then it is mapped to pitch. So we have the pitch device in here and then the pitch is determining which drum hit is being played here so let's create this from scratch let's just duplicate get rid of all these even though I'm about to put them back so the first step is to have the Randorga device that will be linked in the description so let's go reset, reset, and reset. Let's just take a full bar here. So we have one full bar, mon uh, solo that play nothing is happening which is as expected let's put simpler in instruments simpler let's go to our samples um, these are just some that I was playing around with these are from the dry drums um, this is from the dry drums collection let's just pick one I guess that sounds okay, let's put it in there. We want slice, which is critical to this. As you can see, it's sliced according to the transient here. We don't want the filter, we don't want the LFO. Let's leave that now. And if we play this back, we don't hear anything. And that's because it is sliced to the pitch. If we put it back to classic, we can hear it's just doing the same one, the same hit at the start, because we have sixteenths. Slice, as we said, is nothing. <clears throat> that is because it is on different keys. 
So now what we need is a way for these individual hits to be randomly played. That is where this MPE comes in, which was called Expression Control. Now this is a really good device. This allows you to map anything to anything, essentially. We know that, as we said before, that these hits are being triggered by pitch, so we need that to go in there. Actually, let's have a, a listen. We might be able to get something out of this as a test. So there we go, when we move it down to around 20 or so, we can start to hear. So let's get this closer in line. At the moment it's C3. We said 20, so let's put it down 2 to C1. And it is starting at 0. Why well, the first hit, I should say. Which means if we go down, we won't hear anything, but if we go up, we will. Okay. So now, we don't want to keep on manually adjusting this pitch. We want to automate it. And that's where this Randonga device comes in. So we're going to map velocity to this little guy. We don't want... So we've got the minimum and max values here. We know that it's starting at zero, so that's quite handy. We can leave that. And then we just need to adjust the max value to the point where it gets the maximum number of hits here. So there we go, that was lucky. It was, it's 70 is the magic number. And now, if we go to randomize, So what we can see is that when we play this back, the pitch is actually going to negative, which is causing no output. But we don't want that because we know that it should be zero as a starting point, and it should be triggering the first hit. So what we, should, what we need to do now is adjust the minute and max values so that it captures just this range here. So let's do this manually and see what we can come up with. So there we go, that looks like it's covering most of it. Keep in mind also that if you're one or two either side is actually fine, it could be preferred. We don't necessarily want a hit every 16th. Uh, so that actually gives a bit of um, a bit of groove to it. You might end up having something trigger on an, on an eighth, for example. So we can play this back now and we'll hit randomize and we'll see how this is sending. So that sounds quite good. Also note that if you like, if you hear something that you like, then you can just replicate that over here, for example. So we don't want this one, which is up about there. Let's put him here as well, and there. And we can hear it in context with the rest. Uh, the rest was four bars, I think.
Uh, I think I only had it the last half a bar. Sorry, it was two. We can try another, let's try another one. Let's try this one. There we go, so it's really just a case of setting this up, putting the expression control in, adjusting the minimum max values to accommodate the actual loop that you have, and then throwing in different loops and seeing whichever one suits the, the track best. The benefit of this though is that you'll never get something that's already been used. You might use the same loop as somebody else, but it's generated those patterns completely randomly and no one else will ever have it and it's repeatable. Every time you open this project it will always sound the same way due to it being a controlled random approach. Thanks for that, hopefully you find it interesting or useful and we'll see you next time. Bye bye.